-huh. Hello, this is Charter 13, Wild Reactivity, uh, from the Master in Shiny Book Club of the Art for the S community. So the objective of this charter is to improve our intuitive understanding uh, of reactivity because right now we just have uh, like a application approach, but we need to understand a little bit the reasons behind it. So what is reactivity or reactivity programming? And why is used in Chinese? That's the main question that we're going to answer this session. So, shiny is good magic. If you check the layers of reactivity programming, you won't find a pile of heuristic special cases and hats. That I was that was maybe some of the what happens in a, in the cell world, you know, in it says. You can do many things, but sometimes you need to make some hats and provide some errors to do certain things. Uh, Chinese wasn't developed in that way, so it's easier to understand. The magic comes from a single concept combining in a, a consistent way. So why is reactive programming? It's a paradigm which focuses on values that change over time. And calculations and actions that depend on those values. Also, from Wikipedia, we can see that it's a concept with data strings, sequence of data elements, and the programming, uh, uh, propagation of changes. And I use the lips to create this as an example. Basically, you move something and then the dominoes are like uh, data strings because are the sequence of data points that will be changed based on that interaction. So that's the way that in the chain works, in the reactivity works. You make a change and then it will also change in, in different ways depending on the relationship that we have defined. What activity problem in Chinese? The problem. We want to keep sign inputs and outputs, but we need to minimize the computation needed to do that. It's like in the old time, we used to have web pages. And to have an update, we used to have to load the whole web page. Now, thanks to JavaScript, we can just click one button and just that relationship, you know, changes. So you don't need to download again the whole page. What is the solution? The outputs and outputs and reality expression change if and only if the inputs change. So rather than changing everything, you just go to the, to the part that needs to be changed if is requested. Why we can use variables? Variables don't update automatically when prior values changes. For example, if we have the variable, we set the variable stem, 10 Celsius, and we want to another variable to, to show the Fahrenheit value related based on this formula. If we then change the, the temperature, the sense variable, that won't change the Fahrenheit one because they are independent. So basically, we want to get to keep seeing things, we cannot use variables, just that they are defining R. Also, why we cannot use functions? Because functions change based on inputs. They address the issue of the automatic updated, but it requires excessive computation. If we follow our example of one 10 Celsius, and we create this function, even though it's not a pure function because you are taking the cells from the global environment, trying to um, you know, add into the function argument, you, you can do it. So you can save them and then you will call the function and it will retrieve the correct value. You change the value to the cells, they also will update. And yeah, the problem is that every time that you call the function, you are making this computation. 
and we don't want to do that. Once you do the computation, once you don't want to do it again. Also, there is another way to make this that is even driving programming. This method called back functions that run in response to events, like clicking a button, running a function to process an order. We can define events using our seed package in R. Have you have ever used that? Hey, Carlo? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, I took a, 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 uh, at least not not a you know directly. Maybe exactly. in, some of the packages that we use, yeah, they use it uh, internally, but yeah, they use it internally. Not not as a package, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a really powerful package. It's for mm -hmm. or object or object oriented programming yeah. in R. Yep, yep. Um, I don't know too much how to define. They 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 leave the code here to define the object and the methods, but the point here is that it's a little bit hard to track. That that's the point. It's mm -hmm. not the problem on necessary computation, but may hard to track which input affect which computations. So if we define an object for because this is, this is a object factory. So this is a dynamic value, it's an object factory. And you say, okay, this is a new object because they define it like they were environments, you know, it's something like that. <laughs> then they, inside of that new object, they define the, the on day function to, 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 to change the Fahrenheit. You see here we have the double assign because they want from that function to change the global environment. So once you set a value of them, then you will be able to, to, to find this, this object available with the correct value. And yeah, that's kind of the way that Chinese works. Maybe something related to this part. But they rather that you need to define yourself the object and define the function yourself, they, they manage that complexity for us. So if we call Chinese and also uh, apply this function, reactive console, so we will be able to apply reactive programming in our R session. We'll be able to to use our function create bar, so to them. And it will give us the value. So it, it will give the value, they explain. And we'll be able to set the value and change it. And then we can define the reality expression as we usually do with the function based on this reality value. So as we have this value right here, uh, they change the value, they define this value of Fahrenheit. But if we change our Celsius value, it also changes the Fahrenheit. But when we call it again, we don't need to, to make the computation because it catch the value. So that's the really advantage. In summary, Shiny is lazy. It only works when it's called. So you don't need to make extra computation in its catch. Save last result to only work on first call. So that's all is about efficiency. And also the chapter ends uh, defining a little bit of history of reactive programming. The, the story of reactive programming is starting in spreadsheets with this call. So yeah, if you, you know how to use a project, yeah, they were in that way. So they just update the, the cells that are related to the cells that changes before. But it was not a study academically, you know, to understand the property and the benefit of that concept until the nineties. And 20 years after that, it becomes mainstream thanks to JavaScript frameworks. 
uh, can knock out Ember uh, Meteor that was the inspiration to create Shiny. And now we have also the frameworks React, Blue, and Angular that all the, the all of them were based on the reactive concept. So reactive programming is a general term and a lot of different implementation can fit in that concept, even though they are no, they are not part of the same institute to China, but it's the same concept. And does anyone have something else that you, you would like to add? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to add that uh, in one of the keynotes uh, from the art conferences, I don't remember, you know, which one, uh, but uh, the creator of Chine, Shiny, uh, uh, Joe, I think it's Joe Chen, right? Yeah, Joe Chen. Uh, very mm -hmm. shiny. Uh, he talked about uh, how, how Meteor inspired him, you know, to create eventually what, what was called Shiny. And uh, you know you can you can check it on in, in YouTube probably probably is there. And yeah, one I of think the things I, that I see it, I see it. Yeah, I, I, you've seen it, right? And one of mm -hmm. the things that it was really interesting and it was kind of a kind of a confession, you know, at that time, is that uh, he was he you know at that time in in our studio, he was uh, uh, he was thinking of leaving our studio, okay, because uh, you know he didn't find any challenge, any challenge uh, within within the 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 are you know ecosystem mm -hmm. and when he encountered this then he says okay this is the this is the secret sauce that is going to really uh revolutionize you know uh the the art ecosystem uh, and, it, and it has because usually R it has been morely for statistics uh mainly for academical work etc but it was not the go-to program for you know general production development and because of this of shiny now you have a, you know a, a whole new a, a, you know whole new universe uh, to play with okay so uh, it, it was that the, the keynote was very interesting in terms of the the history of uh, yeah, shiny and how how he impact you know his uh, you know his vision of what our studio could be and eventually in that in that same keynote you know he he spilled the beans instead our studio was going to change their name to Posit also. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. And now Shani for Python, you know, is is getting uh, it is getting traction there. So yeah. you, know, you know the uh, making available Shiny to Python mm -hmm. that also have increased the popularity of R even. I didn't I didn't yeah. expect that. It's like oh yeah when people when somebody say oh we are using shiny they say oh this is a great framework we didn't know that you have that in our <laughs> correct yeah yeah no it, it was a it was a, a very you know well kept secret you know <laughs> so yeah now now they understand that okay it's no as just academic way that we think it was right right yeah and, and there's a lot of companies that uh you know have have been created just to create shiny uh, you know, shiny uh, apps and shiny products, and it, and it keeps expanding. You know the 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 framework. You know, I I was watching the the last video I saw in composing was uh -huh. how how to use VS Lib. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you did you I see to, that? I, 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 yeah, I, I started, but I, I couldn't continue, so I have to I have to keep watching it. Oh yeah, it was really. Mm -hmm. It was really easy. You know, you see the video. You will see that basically you yeah. it, they are just following what we have learned in our prior chapters. Right. So you just need to grab to instead of using the UI functions from Shiny, mm -hmm. you just and the teams, you know, the you just need to use the BSL elements and that's it. Yeah, we update the UI. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And and you create your layout and you know all that and you populate. Yeah, the, yeah the because there was, it was also explaining, I, I think it was in another keynote that the BS lead is also the new Chinese dashboards. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you are not supposed to uh, to use Chinese dashboard because this is the new, mm -hmm. the new approach that they are using. Yeah, yeah. To, to yeah so I, I had to watch that, you know, uh, uh, completely to, you know, check what are the new 
the tendencies and the new trends. Yeah, you, you will see. Yeah, it's, it's really easy to 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 uh, once you you see it, you will be able to to use those functions. Well, Ricardo, I think that's all for today. See that's you for today? next okay. week. Sure. I will stop. Oh, am.